Hi you guys, it's Miss Neal from Chandler Athenaeum, and today we are going to read a finished tale of humility. Think about that word real quick. Um, since I will be doing a little bit of reading today, I will try my hardest to speak loud and clear. Please be patient with me. In Athenaeum, we often talk about virtue. Do you remember what humility is? Humility means placing others before ourselves and not bragging or promoting ourselves. It means doing our best just because it's our best, not because we receive praise or recognition. Today, I'm going to share a story from the country of Finland. Finland is a Northern European country near Norway and Sweden. Hopefully you guys are able to see that. Every country has its own traditions and tales, and often those stories help us think about virtues and how we can be the best versions of ourselves. As I read, I want you to think about who in this story shows humility and how it's rewarded. All right. The Princess, Mouse, and a Finnish Folktale Retold by Francesca Morgan. Once there were two brothers who were sons of a farmer. As they grew, it was time for them to marry. Their father said, Boys, have you come of age, and it is time of each of you to find a wife. In our family, we have our own way of choosing a bride. The younger said, the younger son, Miko, listened with honor and respect to his father's request. The older son hotly, hotly, hotly replied, I know, father, you've told us before. We must cut a tree down, and the way it lands is the direction in where we find our bride. The father nodded and told them they must walk in the direction that the tree pointed until they found a sweetheart. That was the tradition they would follow. The older son already had a sweetheart, and he knew how to cut a tree to make it fall in the direction he wanted. That was his plan. The brothers went to go and cut their trees. Miko did not have a sweetheart, so he thought he would try to cut a tree and aim it into town. However, when he cut the tree, it did not landing, land pointing towards the town, but towards the forest. His older brother laughed and teased him. <laughs> oh, Miko, maybe you should find a fox or a bear to marry. Miko ignored his brother's jests and went walking in the direction the tree pointed. Miko walked and walked. He walked for hours through the forest, not finding a single soul. Just as he was about to give up, he saw a little cottage. He went into the cottage, hoping to find his sweetheart. And to his disappointment, there was no one in the cabin. The cabin had been deserted. As he turned to leave, Miko said, I guess this was a waste of my time. But suddenly, he heard a small voice say, Maybe not. He turned around to see who spoke. On the old table was a tiny, furry little mouse. Did you just say something? He asked the mouse. And the mouse replied, Why don't you tell me your name and what you came looking for? Me Miko, a respectful young man, felt the polite thing to do was to answer, even if it was a little mouse talking. He said, my name is Miko, and I come. I came looking for my sweetheart. I'll be your sweetheart, squealed the little mouse. But you're only a mouse, said Miko. Mice can still be special, and I can still love you faithfully, Miko. Come feel my soft fur, replied the mouse. Miko felt her fur with one finger, and it felt like velvet. She sang to him while he pet her fur. Miko had found no one else, and she was a wonderful little mouse. All right, he said, you can be my sweetheart. You won't be sorry, said the little mouse. Miko wasn't sure about that, but he kept stroking her velvet, her velvet fur and smiled. Miko returned home to his brother and father. His brother was proudly boasting of his sweetheart with golden hair and rosy cheeks. When Miko came in the door, his older brother, observing Miko, did not bring home his sweetheart. And he began to laugh at him and ask, <laughs> And where did you find your sweetheart, Miko? Where is your sweetheart? Did you find one with a nice fur coat? 
And Miko didn't want to admit his sweetheart was a mouse. So he just told him his sweetheart had a coat of velvet like a princess. His brother stopped laughing. The father then told the boys that they would need to ask their sweetheart to weave a cloth to test their skills. The next morning, the boys set out to their sweethearts to give them the request. When Miko reached the cabin, the little mouse jumped up and down squealing. Miko, you're here. Is today the day of our wedding? No, it is not, replied Miko. He stroked the little mouse's fur and explained. My father has asked that our sweethearts weave a clove to test their skill. But you are only a mouse. How can you weave, weave any cloth? I may be only a mouse, but I am also your sweetheart. You must be tired from your journey. Take a rest, my Miko. The mouse sang to him and Miko fell asleep. As soon as he was in a deep sleep, the little mouse clapped her little soft paws. Hundreds of mice appeared from the holes and cracks in the walls. She ordered them to find and bring pieces of the finest flax. The mice scurried off and came back with an each, oh, I'm sorry. The mice scurried off and came back each with a thread of flax. They all worked together on weaving a machine to make cloth out of the flax. Some were feeding the thread in while the little mouse and the other would push the petals. They stuffed the fabric in a nutshell. The mice scurried away as Miko awoke. The little mouse gave the nutshell to Miko and sent him back to his father. Miko had no idea what his father would want with a nutshell. When Miko returned home, his father was looking over the cloth his brother's sweetheart made. Nice, it's strong and fairly even. Good enough for simple folk like us, said the father. Miko shyly handed his father the nutshell. His brother burst laughing. <laughs> you asked for cloth and your sweetheart gave you a nutshell? Ha! <laughs> Miko felt embarrassed. The father opened the nutshell and looked closely inside. He saw a piece of cloth made of the finest linen. As he pulled on it, it just kept coming out, yard by yard. They were all astonished, especially Miko. Surely, Miko has found this finest weaver for a sweetheart, proclaimed his father. Go fetch your sweetheart tomorrow, and you will both be married. The next morning, Miko went back to the cabin. The mouse saw him and squealed. Miko, is today the day of our wedding? And sadly, Miko said, yes. But how am I going to take a mouse home to marry? Everyone will laugh at me. The mouse responded, you're right, Miko. Everyone will laugh, but that doesn't matter. What do you think? Miko thought how the mouse loved and cared for him. He responded, let them laugh. You are a fine sweetheart. The mouse clapped her little paws and four rats came out, pulling a nutshell like a carriage. Miko placed his sweetheart in the carriage and though, thought she was a queen. Off ran the rats as the mouse sang on her happiness. Miko ran after them to catch up. He was filled with excitement over his upcoming marriage, for even though he knew he would be mocked for his choice, the little mouse would be good, be a good, kind wife to him, and he respected her for her virtue. They arrived at the spot near the river where the brothers were to have their weddings. As the mouse pulled up to the spot, Miko's brothers saw them. He was outraged. He swiftly kicked the rats and mouse into the river. What have you done to my sweetheart? yelled Miko, distraught as he watched the carriage disappear. Are you crazy? It was a mouse, yelled his brother. You've killed her. She really was my sweetheart and I loved her. And Miko went to attack his brother, but the shouts of his father stopped him. Miko, look! Everyone looked, turned and looked down the river as four black horses and a carriage emerged from the water. The people gasped in astonishment as the horses rode up to the spot where Miko was. A beautiful princess opened the door of the carriage and said, Miko, aren't you going to help me down? Miko was stunned. Were you the little mouse? 
Smiling, the princess said, I was. An evil witch had cast a spell on me, and the only way it could be broken was to have one brother that wanted to marry me and one brother who wanted to kill me. Miko's father gave them a grand wedding. When Miko and his princess bride returned to the cabin of woods, it was no longer a cabin, but a castle with hundreds of servants. Later, when Miko and the princess had sons, can you guess how they chose their brides? Now, what is the opposite of humility? We often call it pride, don't we? Which character do you think acted in this way? I feel like that was a pretty funny story. That was the first time I was reading it with you guys. So when the brother kicked the mice into the water, I, I was sad. <laughs> so Miko and his brother had very different ways of acting. Miko was willing to put aside his pride and act rightly. His humility was rewarded with the gift of a lovely and kind princess to share his life with. I hope you guys enjoyed the story from Finley. Tell me your favorite part in the comments below. If the story inspires you to draw a picture, send it to me in an email and I will share it with your friends on Facebook. Stay safe. I miss you guys so much. I hope you really enjoyed that story. Bye.